So for uh, this review session, um, as our intro review session, I just want to kind of talk about the specifics of what to expect on your 110 uh, test, which I believe is the first Tuesday in October, and it's or Monday in October, October 2nd, I believe is your test. If it's not, then it's in that vicinity. Um, and I like to first and foremost talk about the specifics of the test, what to expect, and then go over where they're getting um, their, uh, you know, the types of questions you would uh, see on your test. Um, after I go through some of that, I'm going to go over, uh, go through some review tips. And then um, if there's a little bit of time left, we'll start doing a couple practice questions just so you can kind of kind of get an idea of what to expect um, and how to start answering some of these questions. If you want to get a head start, you can just go right to the um, the OneDrive shared folder and just start practicing the practice tests that are listed there. Um, any of them that are PDFs have not been written on or changed, and they're the ones that are, um, what would you say, the static tests. They have a key that should be accurate. Um, any of the ones that are Word documents are going to um, have been potentially altered, and then the keys might be incorrect. So, um, but together we'll try and correct that, and um, and and I'll make sure that uh, that you have at least a working example. The other thing is you should have a practice um, 110 or a practice dosage calc test available to you on Blackboard. But I would say wait until you get closer to the actual test to take it because I'd like for you to be able to go through that without um, – Without, uh, you know, stopping and pausing and looking up information, my hope is that um, I'll give you all the tools that you can just go through that and then be like, all right, I nailed this, and then you'll be good to go. So before um, before we get started, a couple of pieces of information about the uh, 110 test. You will be given a 25-question test. It'll be 25. I don't, and again, I don't know if it's going to be on Blackboard or if it's going to be paper, but I'll prepare you for either way. 25 questions, and you will um, have one hour to complete the 25 question, and it's a math test, for lack of a better term. You have to get a 92% or better, which means you can only miss two, and and then you have two attempts to get to that 92%. What I mean by that is, let's say you take the test when everyone else takes it and you get, and you miss three questions. That's an 88%. You have failed the test. You have to remediate and retake the test. Hopefully on the retake, on the second attempt, you get the 92% or ideally 100% and then you can continue on with 110. If, however, you do not pass the remediation in the second attempt, um, from what I understand, they will withdraw you from the 110 and you'll have to repeat it um, next semester. So that's how important it is to pass the dosage calc test. So um, make sure you're asking questions. Um, the way I, the format that I usually like to work with is feel free to unmute or raise your hand, then I can I can call on you. Or you can just type into the chat box and say you have a question or just say your question. If you feel like you don't want to ask me a question because you might be embarrassed, um, if you send it to me as a direct message, I will not call out your name. Um, I'll just say, oh, someone asked about, and then I'll just say what it is. Obviously, if you didn't ask, you know it wasn't you. So there's three people in here. So there's some anonymity um, to uh, whomever asked the question. So um, I'm going to get into this in just a second. The first thing I want to do is just talk about the um, what to expect as far as your blueprint. So you should have this blueprint should be listed in your um, 110 packet. If not, um, it's also on um, the OneDrive folder, but basically 
what's listed here underneath 110 is what you are going to see on your test on um, in October. You're going to ask some questions about household measurements and converting between the imperial or household system to the metric system and vice versa. You're going to see some metric unit conversions. So converting from milligrams to grams, micrograms to milligrams, milliliters to liters and such. You're going to have a um, fluid replacement. Um, so it's like an intake output calculation. Basically, you're going to calculate a replacement volume. You're going to see um, some calculation of some oral-based medications. And what I mean by that is it'll be something like, um, you know, you're ordered 250 or the order is 500 milligrams of a particular antibiotic. The antibiotic is available as 250 milligrams per capsule. How many capsules will you administer? And you would say, okay, 250 milligrams is what's available. The order is 500. I'm going to give them two capsules. So those are your oral based medications. Now, oral based medications can also be um, so they can be it can be tablets, it can be capsules, but it can also be um, milliliters in the form of an oral suspension. So if you give somebody like a liquid based solution that they're going to swallow or um, a rinse that they might swish like mycostatin is a good example of that. So if someone has thrush. For um, you're also going to have some calculations based off of what are called parenteral medications. These are any medications that would be injected into the body. So IV intravenous, subcutaneous SC or IM, which is intramuscular. Those are always going to be milliliter based um, medications because you can only inject liquids into a person not going to inject powders and you're not going to inject tablets or capsules. So it's going to be milliliters. The difference between oral medications that are like oral suspensions and the injectables is just the mode in which they are delivered. But the math is the, exactly the same. So there's really no difference between how you would calculate milliliters from an oral suspension um, versus milliliters for an injectable. You'll have um, some reconstitution questions. Basically, um, some medications come in a powdered form. The pharmacy will add water to it, and you need to be able to look through and uh, navigate a label in order to identify which strength to use, whether it's like use the, choose the strongest concentration um, or being able to determine what is the strongest concentration based off of what volume was added to the powder and also know how to um, uh, eliminate uh, information that's not important for solving the, um, um, the problem. And we'll talk about that. And the last thing is doing some insulin. Um, you'll do a sliding scale question. Basically, it, let's say a patient's blood sugar is 212 and the there's a range of 200 to 225 and it says if it's in that range to give them two units of insulin then that's what you mark you write down two units of insulin so that's not as much math as much as it is just um um following the directions and knowing how to uh read a graph basically the other thing you'll be responsible for on this test is marking things like cups, tubex, um, syringe. So you will get some practice in doing some of that stuff. If it's on Blackboard, it's the marking of things a little bit different. But if it's on paper, they're going to be looking for specific things in which to mark. Um, and I'll try and show you both ways. The marking is important because that's usually what people miss. People usually miss... Um, it's a rounding issue or they forgot to mark the thing that um, uh, that they were asked to mark. And so I'm going to hopefully try and show you how to not um, make those types of errors or mistakes. OK, so let me switch to I have a different screen I'm going to show you. If you go on to my. Um, or if you go onto the OneDrive folder, 
you're going to see um, this thing that I've listed as dosage calc review intro. Um, let's we'll see if it says anything else. Dosage calc review intro review tips. And basically, I created this really for all the semesters. So there's some information that you won't need to worry about on this. But I also wrote out like kind of the things you will need to worry about not only this semester, but all four semesters. So a couple things to always keep in mind when we're doing um, dosage calc uh, review and also dosage calc testing and practicing, what is the question asking for? Is it asking for how many milligrams or milliliters? Is it asking for how many capsules or tablets? Or do you have to kind of figure out um, what it's looking for? Because sometimes questions can be like that. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, you know, sometimes it'll ask you, you know, how much to administer per dose, but maybe it's asking you how much to administer per day. Um, sometimes it'll ask you how many teaspoons to give versus how many milliliters to give. So make sure you're reading the question and you clearly un understand what the question is asking for. I will try to role model that when I go through some of the practice questions over the next couple of weeks. That way you can kind of see um, what to expect. Then you want to use um, the tools you already know, which you will learn uh, <laughs> on how to set up the questions and answer the questions. A lot of nursing students like to follow what's called the ordered over available or ordered over have or desired over have kind of equation. I like to show you dimensional analysis only because um, it's a way to kind of organize and I can say without any kind of hesitation that if you can do dimensional analysis, like and you don't have to be like an expert at it or anything like that, but if you can do it appropriately and properly, you can answer every single question you ever encounter when it comes to these things. You just need to know what your conversions are. The other thing is it's a way for me to show you how to set up a problem if you ever get stuck, you have a method to do it. And I usually like to bounce between showing you dimensional analysis, showing you ordered over available. I will also say that um, there's multiple ways to answer your questions. Nobody's telling you, at least at this campus, at Allegheny campus, telling you how to solve a particular problem. Um, they just want you to get to the right answer and then try and show your work to some extent. All right, so a couple things. Um, Make sure, um, and we'll get some practice on this. So some of this stuff is more so more geared towards some of the later semesters, but some of your uh, things might give you extra information. Like the example I have here, it says there's 60 tablets in a bottle. Knowing how many tablets are in a bottle or how many tablets are left in the bottle doesn't help you to calculate what we're doing. It just tells you how much was in the bottle when it was brand new. And you're just hoping that there's enough in the bottle when you administer it. And if not, you just open up another bottle. Okay. So we have, you know, in this situation, we might have a, uh, a you know, a somewhat infinite number of bottles in which to source from if we needed to. Um, we do need to know that if we know that one tablet is 325 milligrams, now we know how many or what the strength, the concentration is of that tablet of milligrams. So the example I made up is, let's say the physician orders uh, 650 milligrams and it says BID. Then what I would want to know is then, okay, I can set up an equation and I can say, well, I know each tablet is 325 milligrams. So that's where this cal uh, calculation came from. 650 milligrams uh, divided by 325 milligrams times your one tablet gives me an answer of two tablets. Okay. So if you're looking at that, you can see that. Great. If not, we'll do some practice on these and hope, and then I think you'll get it as we kind of go through these a couple of things. Okay. So there's going to be extra information. I'm going to show you how to kind of uh, pull out or tease out what you need. And again, knowing how to do dimensional analysis helps with that because you'll see that there's extra information. Sometimes you'll be like, well, that doesn't have any, I, I, that using that information is not going to help me to answer or solve this problem. So I'm just not going to utilize it. And I'll show you when and when not to, to do that. Um, 
this is more of a concern for some of the other um, uh, campuses, but you know, if you are writing these things down, it's always good to write your units. Nursing is a biological or nursing has within it. It's a medical science. It's a biological science. We use units. We don't just have numbers. You know, we don't just say, hey, I need three. Well, three what? You know, do you need three cans of soda? Do you need three milliliters? Do you need three liters? What do you need three of? So you want to make sure you're qualifying that. So when you write your answers, make sure your units are associated with it. Um, some of the campuses will um, mark it wrong if you um, do not indicate your um, your units appropriately. Some things, and you don't need to worry about this for this semester, but some uh, questions will ask you to utilize military time. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that later on um, as needed, but you should um, uh, get well-versed in military time. You should be getting well-versed in that throughout your um, 110 semester. Um, but if not, there's plenty of YouTube videos expressing or explaining how to utilize military time. Um, reconstitutions, we'll talk a little bit more about this as we get on, but basically it's, can you look at a, um, a medication and determine which one is the stronger concentration, which one is the, um, weaker concentration. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, um, um, what you have available and we'll see some examples of that in a little bit. All right. Um, before I move forward, are there any questions based off of anything I've kind of really kind of quickly ran through? Um, okay. If you do at any point have questions, just like I said, raise your hand, unmute, or just type it into the chat, and then um, we will try and answer those questions for you. All right, so the next thing that's gonna be important is you're gonna to need to know some basic conversions because these will not be given to you, okay? You're gonna be expected to know these and to recite them or to utilize them without them being given to you. So there won't be like a cheat sheet. It won't be written on a separate sheet of paper somewhere. Um, you're going to need to know these things. The only thing you're going to get other than your test um, is going to be a calculator, just a base, excuse me, a basic 10 key calculator that the nursing department is going to give you to use during your test. So you can't bring in your own, although it is always a good idea. If you don't have a calculator, go ahead and get one. I think they're like $15, $20 for a decent, like basic calculator at, um, uh, what's it called? Sam's Club. All right, uh, uh, Walmart, and then, um, the uh, or you could just use your cell phone's calculator. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so uh, Danielle, to answer your question, it's on Blackboard in the dosage calc folder, and then there's some links in there listed. So. And then that, then you can find this, you'll find the link to my OneDrive folder, and then you have access to that, unless for some reason the access got closed off. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, sometimes they forget to turn on the dosage calc tab, but it should be, it should be available to you. It's, it was available um, even before last week when I was supposed to start these. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so... You need to know that one gram is 1,000 milligrams. You need to know that one milligram is 1,000 micrograms. You need to know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. You need to know that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. You need to know that one teaspoon is 5 milliliters. One tablespoon is 15 milliliters. An ounce is 30 milliliters. And an hour is 60 minutes. Some of these you might already have memorized or have learned from previous uh, classes and things, but just letting you know that you are responsible for knowing these things for this as well. And like I said before, you won't be given um, these things, so you need to know what they are. 
Um, there might be some other things that will come up, but we'll talk about those as we kind of move along in the in the progression of this uh, reviews. The um, if you're in your kitchen, you can see teaspoons and tablespoons. Just look at it the next time you're baking, or just open up your your drawer that has your teaspoons and tablespoons in it. I'm talking about measuring spoons, not your you know uh, soup spoons and cereal spoons. <laughs> Um, and then look at it. It'll say one teaspoon, five milliliters, one tablespoon, 15 milliliters. Then you can then look at your measuring cups and they should also um, show you like ounces and milliliters and show them side by side. Or sometimes it's on the opposite. You know, one side is the imperial household measurements and one side is the metric measurements. But you should have some uh, reference as far as that's concerned. All right. Then um, some things to know about rounding. Rounding rules. Um, there's a couple things to keep in mind. This is listed in the blueprint as well. I just kind of added a few extra things. Um, a good rule to a good rule to follow when it comes to rounding is you want to try and have at least two digits in your answer, meaning like you might have like an answer of zero point five, right? That would be two two uh, digits in your answer. But if you have an answer of like five, then that's your answer. You don't need to worry about um, having too many digits in there or, or writing 5.0. In fact, you don't want to use trailing zeros and you only want to use leading zeros if you have a number less than one. Okay, so that's that's what this says right here. So leading zero. So if you got an answer of 0 0.25, then your answer is 0 0.25. You would use that leading zero. But if your answer is five, don't write zero five, okay? Some students have been taught that. I don't know if that's like a high school thing or or a middle school thing, but uh, that's not a thing in um, nursing. So don't, don't do zero five. Same thing goes for trailing zeros. You don't need them because what can happen is it can create confusion. So like if your answer is 0 0.5, that's your answer. Don't write 0 0.50 um, because that could get mis uh, mistaken, especially if you put like a little decimal, don't put a leading zero and it says point, but you can't really see the point five zero, then they might think your answer is 50 milliliters. So that would be wrong on a test. It also, it also could be problematic if that's what you're supposed to be administering to a patient. You're supposed to be giving them 0.5 milliliters and you give them 50 milliliters, that could be a real big uh, problem. We have separate rounding rules whenever we are doing rounding um, for numbers greater than one and numbers or volumes less than one. If we have a volume greater than one milliliter, okay, then we're going to look at the number and we're going to see. So if you have three numbers here, 1.25, I'm going to round that number to the nearest tenth. Rounding rules are the same rounding rules that you should have learned, like in biology and um, in chemistry. You look at the, the number in the next place. So in this instance, it's in the hundredths place. So the five is in the hundredths place. And I look at that number. If it's five or greater, we round up. So I'm going to round 1.25 to 1.3 milliliters. If we have a number that's less than, so it's four or fewer, then we don't round up. We just leave it at 1.2 milliliters. Now, the reason I'm kind of tiptoeing around this too is because there are going to be times when you're going to round, like when we're actually doing like there's a medication, there's a label you're going to do some rounding, but if we're just doing like simple conversions, like going from liters to milliliters or milliliters to liters, we don't want to round in that situation. And I'll give you some examples of that. Um, if not today, definitely um, starting next week. If we have a volume less than one, like 0 0.969, we're actually going to bring it back and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth place. So then we would look at the thousandth if it exists, and we would 
uh, calculate based off of that. So in this example, 0 0.969, I'm going to look at that 9, and that tells me to round up to 0 0.97. If we have 0 0.963, I'm going to look at that 3, and that would tell me not to round up, so I just leave it at 0 0.96. Let's say you get an answer of 0 0.75. Well, now you don't need to do anything. It's That's your answer. You don't need to round it up. You don't need to round it down. You just leave it at 0 0.75. If you get 1.3, then that's your answer. You don't need to round that. You would just leave it as 1.3. Typically, rounding should occur after all calculations have been completed. The exception typically is if you're converting pounds to kilograms, a lot of times you can just do that conversion um, right there and then. But some people will go through and do like very old school dimensional analysis and they'll save their rounding for the end. You should still come up with the same answer. It shouldn't change it. Um, you'll see that this will be important later, later on. Tablets are considered to be scored, so you could give somebody a half tablet. You can't give them a quarter tablet, and you can't give someone a half a capsule, but a tablet could. In fact, that's why they have pill cutters and things like that. So if you have family that have used those things or you use those things, um, or if you've walked down the pharmacy aisle and you've seen or the aisle near the pharmacy that has like pill, you know, pill cases, and then you sometimes will see pill cutters. That's what they're there for. So they can cut their cut their pills because they're not going to do it at the pharmacy. Um, don't worry about drops just yet. You'll see those next semester. Um, and then the last little note I added here um, is do not round basic conversions. So if I'm going from milligrams to micrograms. Don't round those. And I'll, like I said, I'm going to give you plenty of examples as we go through this, um, through these reviews over the course of the next couple of weeks. Um, so you will see examples of these things and then I'll try and highlight. And if you come across a practice question and you wonder why I did or did not round that particular question or why that key says to round or not round, then make sure you bring those up. Um, if you can't be on the reviews, just you can always email me um, and then you can even email me through Blackboard because I'm on your uh, Blackboard. For those of you that came in after I started, just so you know, I am recording these. Um, they will be uploaded onto my YouTube channel. The link for the YouTube channel and the link for what I'm looking at right now is all on Blackboard. Um, it's just in a OneDrive shared folder. Um, that you can just click on the link and then you should be able to open up and you would navigate to Allegheny campus or it just says Allegheny and then go to 110 and then you should find all the information you could need for uh, practicing and reviewing um, these questions. And of course, if you have any questions, just raise your hand, unmute or type it into the chat. All right, so a couple of um, helpful equations. Most nursing students like this. So I, I have it written as, because I've always, when it was first ex um, discussed to me, it was called desired over have. I've also, I, usually it's also called ordered over available. Um, but some of you might know it as desired over have. And that's usually like the, 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 the standard that a lot of students like to utilize. I think it works great especially for the majority of your oral-based and your injectable medications. Um, the thing that students usually forget is the quantity component because they're like, desire to ever have, desire to ever have. But you forget the quantity because sometimes the quantity is one, no big deal if you forget it. But sometimes the quantity is five, sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's two. It just depends on what it is. So that's going to give you different um, answers depending on uh, what you what you put on it. So make sure you're paying attention to your um, uh, your equations and what you should be um, or, or pay attention to what your quantities are. And I'll try and give you examples. Um, these two are for next semester. So you don't need to worry about flow rates this semester. Um, 
we might get to it. I might give you some examples of this, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. You will see this. We'll, uh, I use this setup um, as far as being able to calculate what your replacement volume is. So if, if any of you have gone ahead and looked at the practice test, you've seen this, um, uh, you know, it says like the patient, uh, if the patient voids, you know, 150 milliliters in four hours, replace with 40 milliliters. Um, and then they actually voided 500 milliliters. So how much would you replace with? That's this, this is what you would use to answer that question. Um, I'll also go over it from a dimensional analysis standpoint and just show you how I came about with or came about that information. Some of you like to use ratio proportion to answer your questions. That works fine. As long as you get the right answer, that's really all we care about. And then, of course, I'm going to focus on dimensional analysis, um, not because it's what I personally use in everyday examples, but me telling you I solved the question at hand in my head doesn't help you to answer the question yourself. So I try and show you how I would set something up, and then you can always shorthand it um, by using order or have or, or desire to have or whatever the case may be. Uh, a lot of my information I gathered from these two textbooks, um, the Gian Grosso, Gian Grosso and Shrimpton, and then the Picar book. Um, you don't need to get this book. You don't need to buy it. But if you um, use it as a reference, you can always get it. You know, they have different editions. They're probably, they're, at this point, they're probably in the 10th or 11th edition for some of these things. You can just get it on uh, Amazon for uh inexpensive all right so i'm gonna go ahead and close out of this uh, let me open up a new thing here All right, give me just a moment. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, it, like I said, you don't need any textbook. So any textbook that you have, so that's a new one for me. Um, so by Anna McCurran. Or Anna M. Curran. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it, any any dosage calc review is going to be beneficial. Um, I'm just telling you, I from my understanding, you don't require the textbook, um, but if you have it, then then great. Oh, okay, good. Was that nursing 108? Or I mean, um, MAT 108, or was it? uh an actual nursing uh nsg 104 yeah it was the actual nursing nsg 104 okay so you you took yeah. that out of north campus is that right yeah okay. Mm -hmm. okay yeah i think um who who teaches that again uh i forget her name to be honest i'm okay. awful with names it was really short class it was only like three days long okay um i could probably pull it up it's okay. You don't, I just, I know who it is. I just can't remember her name. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's been doing the one Oh four class. That's actually a class I used to teach, um, for Allegheny campus. Um, but then they just do these open reviews instead of having you sign up for a class. Right. So, um, I think her name was Brenna Schneider. That sounds right. Yes. Yeah. So she's actually been doing it longer than I've been doing this stuff. So, um, you got a good class there. I know it was like, kind of like, punch you in the mouth hit you real hard like real quick but <laughs> yeah. um you got a good uh and hopefully got some good review material there as well so yeah i think i did great okay so um i put together this mock test um this is the word version of it if you pull up the powerpoint version of it so let me just it'll say like the 110 practice test 
or practice uh practice set and practice set key actually here we go i just want to show you what this looks like so when you come to it you can kind of use this so this is a blank slate of questions and you can just go through this answer the questions and what i did is i kept it i kept the key and the test itself separate um i will i'm gonna if i have time i'm gonna try and update this and create a new one but the um this is a good evaluation if you can do these questions you should be able to do the test without issue um but more importantly it's just extra it's just practice and we'll go through each of these we'll practice them and then um i'll find out if you're taking a blackboard test or a paper test and then we'll um make some adjustments to that um as we go through so anyways that's what that looks like this is in the 110 or in the 110 uh folder on uh on uh the the shared folder on the OneDrive. So you have access to that. When I'm working on with you guys live, I always pull up the Word version because I can draw on here. Um, and then I draw out, you know, what we're kind of practicing. So I'm just gonna touch on a few of these. And the reason I'm kind of um I I don't have a charger for my laptop and I don't know how much longer it's going to stay live. So I'm going to just try and wrap things up here in the next couple of minutes. But um, a couple things that you want to look at when you're practicing these things is first and foremost, I would make sure you write out those things, those helpful. Um, uh, let me just pull it up. So I'm instead of just mumbling through it. The uh, oh. the basic the basic conversion things i would just as a habit as practice i would write those things down that way you are ready to go um when you're answering some of the or starting to practice some of these things so um at next time you're on campus print off a copy of the practice set the practice set and the practice test um, you can print off the key if you want, but you shouldn't need to. It should be this. It'll be the same questions just with the answers. So just print off, um, you know, a couple copies of that. And then every time you sit down to practice these, may, just make sure you write this down, get in the habit of it that way, because there's nothing wrong with you writing it down when you sit down to take your test. It's just that it won't be given to you when you sit down to take your test, which is why I'm recommending that you write it down. Or if you already took Professor Snyder's class and you have these things memorized, then you don't need to worry about it, okay? Um, so let's take a look at um, some examples here. So the first couple questions you'll typically see are just your basic kind of conversion type questions, going metric to metric or going household to metric, okay? So for like this right here, 1.75 grams, you should be without um, too much difficulty. You should be able to go and convert this from grams to milligrams. There's a couple ways you can do this. If you feel very confident and you already know this, you can just move your decimal point over three spaces and you'll get an answer of 1,750 milligrams. If you're like, holy crap, what did you just do there? Another way of doing this is setting up and this is where you can practice some of your dimensional analysis. Now, the reason I'm going to show it to you this way is because it helps you to organize the information before you solve it. So one 1.75 grams, and I'm looking for milligrams. So I want to be able to convert grams to milligrams. The reason I'm writing the units first is because before I do any kind of math, before I put any kind of numbers in, I know that I've set this up correctly. The only thing I'm missing is the conversion factor. So for this, I know, and you know, or you will know, that one gram is the same thing as 1,000 milligrams. If you've ever taken a test and you wrote an answer that was like, let's say you wrote like, 
0.0175 milligrams and then you got it wrong and like how come sometimes i divide and i should have multiplied or multiplied i should have divided this is where writing it out is helpful to help you remember it so that or making sure you're moving your decimal the right direction one way to also remember is you already know that one gram is 1,000 milligrams. So you should never make this less than 1,000, right? If it's 1.75, you would never make that less than 1,000. You would make it 1,000 and then 750. So just you know, keep that in mind. You can use Google as a tool to verify some of your answers in case you ever get stuck or if you're looking at some of the other practice problems that might be available online. <clears throat> I'll also say that if you come across any practice problems or you're doing some ATI and you're having trouble with them, take a screenshot if you can or write down the question and just email it to me and I'll make sure to go over it. And I'll also sometimes I'll give you a peace of mind and be like, you won't need to worry about that on the test, but this is how you do it. So anyways, the benefit of setting this up via dimensional analysis is you'll know you're in the correct units before you even write anything down. And so it's very helpful as far as um, doing things like that. If you don't like dimensional analysis, don't want to use it, you don't have to do it, okay? Um, I wrote down some of these things here. Um, I want to give you another example of something. I just don't have a, let's see if I can find a place to write it in. I'm just going to write it up on the top here. So let's say I had something like, um, oh, let's say I have 375 micrograms and I want to know how many milligrams that is. So go ahead and take a moment answer this question and put your answer in the chat. Um, if you're not 100% confident in your answer, you can just DM the answer to me or you can DM me, I don't know. All right, good. So I'm seeing some of the answers I was hoping I was going to see. So when you do metric to metric conversions, meaning like if I'm going from micrograms to milligrams, if I'm going from grams to milligrams or milligrams to grams, milligrams to micrograms, you do not write your answers. Um, you do not write, um, you don't round those answers. So actually both answers in the chat, unfortunately, were incorrect. And I'm going to show you what the right answer is. So if we're following this decimal wise, my answer for this, the correct answer for this is 0 0.375. The reason being is you do not round metric to metric conversions. You leave it alone. If we were calculating a uh, volume to inject into a patient and we had a drug listed or something like that, then yes, you would round it to 0 0.38. Now, I'm glad that um, the, the two of you that participated answered. The, the important thing is, if you're going to get something wrong, get it wrong during the review, because this is um, the answer you had put, the 0 0.38 um, and the 0 0.3. Those are common missed problems with just doing these basic metric to metric conversions. So what they're looking for you to do is just make sure you can either move your decimal 
or set it up appropriately with dimensional analysis. One milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. And then they want to also make sure that you're not going to be so diligent looking at the rounding rules that you will quickly round that to 0 0.38. Go ahead, Danielle. Okay, so how I did it is I thought, so I'm used to doing the dimensional analysis way. Um, so I just thought that, what did I think? I don't know. I thought for some reason it was 300. Never mind. I think I wrote it down. I read it wrong. Instead of it being 375 micrograms, I put it in as 300. Okay. But, um, that so that's sense. probably why I got the wrong answer. <laughs> okay. No, you're good. And like, and sometimes believe it or not, that's another thing that gets missed. I'll have students after they remediate mm -hmm. and they'll say like, oh man, I just wrote down the completely wrong number. Or I wrote down the number that was on the practice set and not what was on the actual test. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, so no, yeah, whenever I am doing it with the correct number, 375 micrograms, I am getting the correct um, uh, 0 0.375 milligrams. So I am getting the correct one that way. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you are using 300, then 0 0.3 <laughs> is correct. Right. And if it was 380, then 0 0.38 would be correct. So um, but if it's 375, then 0 0.375 would be correct correct so gotcha thank you all right you're welcome all right so like i said i always tell students this is not about um right or wrong i care that you get it right on your test and if you're going to get it wrong like i said or if you just like you're getting ahead of yourself and you put in different numbers let's figure that all out now while you're studying and learning this stuff without any repercussions Okay. Other than maybe some mild embarrassment, if that's what you feel, oh, or you just say like, oh, I just made a mistake. Big whoop. All right. So um, that's where I'm going to end things for today. Um, I, like I said, I will upload this onto YouTube. What I went over briefly starting next week, I will go through and do some more um, practice questions. And um, in the meantime, um, if you have any questions, you can always email me or, and you can email me through Blackboard or um, just, ask those questions the next time we get together. But the next time we get together, I'm just going to start reviewing and practicing some of the more of these questions. I'll pretty much just go through the mock test, some of the extra practice set questions and um, and show you how to answer these things. Um, but the best way you're going to learn this stuff is just by you practicing it on your own. So um, thanks for attending and I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Oh, Thank I have you. Go ahead. Uh, um, so I have clinicals today. I had clinicals today. So I was a little, I was like 20 minutes late to this. Um, 